Hey there, welcome back to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some of my family's all-time favorite higher protein dinner recipes. All of these recipes are delicious and tried and true, so you don't have to worry about that. Anyways, I do wanna mention all of the meat that I am using in this video actually comes from ButcherBox. They are sponsoring this video. I'm sure you've heard about them in the past. They are a meat subscription company that sends me right to your doorstep, which is very nice and convenient. In this box, I have 100% grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, heritage-bred pork, and wild-caught sockeye salmon. They are running a promotion right now from 2-8, so February 8 to February 28th. All new members will get two New York strip steaks plus a pack of bacon for free in their first box. Plus, shipping is always free. I will link the ButcherBox website in my description box below if you wanna go check them out, but let's go get to cooking. We're gonna begin with these bacon-wrapped chicken tenderloins. To get this one started, you're gonna want a little over a pound of chicken tenderloins, or you could use chicken breast like me. I'm using this organic chicken breast, and I'm just cutting it into strips. Of course, if you do choose to use the chicken tenderloins, you do not need to cut them into strips. So now I'm going to salt them, pepper them on each side, and then for the remainder of the seasonings I'm using, I'm just using some onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika. Now this is when the fun part starts. I have my applewood smoked bacon from Butcher Box right here. I only used half of the package of that. I just sliced it in half so the bacon would be a little bit smaller. It just fits on my chicken better. I grabbed a slice of some sharp cheddar cheese that I cut into smaller pieces, put it on my chicken, and then wrapped that in bacon. I did it with all of my chicken tenderloins, and then I placed it into my air fryer basket. You could either air fry these or bake them in the oven. If you were to bake these in a regular oven on a cookie tray, these would bake in the oven on 450 degrees for about 16 minutes with the broiler on for the last two minutes. But since they're going in my air fryer, I did them on 400 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. Here's the finished product. These chicken tenders wrapped in bacon came out so good. They had a ton of great flavor. I just paired them with a side salad. This is one of my husband's favorite meals. This is my hands down favorite slow cooker barbecue rib recipe. These are fall off the bone. So I'm going to show you how to make it now in this medium sized bowl. I'm adding two cups of barbecue sauce. You could add any type of barbecue sauce that you prefer. Then you're gonna add about a fourth a cup of some brown sugar, two tablespoons of some apple cider vinegar. I'm using this brand of apple cider vinegar, but use whatever type of apple cider vinegar that you like. And then oregano, I think this oregano gives this barbecue sauce a ton of great flavor. I'm adding two teaspoons of that in. And then the last thing you're gonna do is add a teaspoon of some Worcestershire sauce Sauce, and then to season it up, you're going to add a little bit of some chili powder. You're gonna whisk this all together. I chose to use pork ribs for this recipe and about three and a half pounds of them. I placed them on my cutting board and removed the membrane on the back. You definitely don't need to remove the membrane, but I like to do that because it makes them a lot more tender in the end. After I sprayed my crock pot with nonstick spray, I added one of my racks of ribs in, poured half of the barbecue sauce right on top, and then added my second rack of ribs in, and then poured the remainder of the barbecue sauce on top. These ribs are best cooked low and slow in my opinion. So I cooked these on low for eight hours and then my house was smelling so, so good after they were cooked. I just removed them to this cookie tray and lathered them with some warm barbecue sauce. Here's the finished product. These were fall off the bone, tender, amazing, amazing flavor they had. And then I served them with some twice baked potato casserole and my sister-in-law actually made that dinner roll. She makes the best dinner rolls. 
Now for my all-time favorite baked salmon recipe. This recipe is so, so good. In this bowl, I have three tablespoons of melted butter. Then you're gonna add in a teaspoon of brown sugar. I know that might seem weird, but that brown sugar adds a ton of great flavor. Then you're gonna add in a half a teaspoon of oregano, thyme, and rosemary, and give this a good stir. For this recipe, I'm using my favorite salmon yet. This is the wild caught sockeye salmon. I just placed it on my cooking tray lined with some parchment paper. Then you're gonna season it with plenty of some salt and pepper. You're just gonna wanna pour the butter and seasoning mixture all over the salmon. One thing that I do wanna point out that I've done in the past is I've doubled the butter and seasoning mixture and then I've added fresh broccoli florets to the cooking tray and then poured the butter over the broccoli as well. I just thought that was delicious. I did that in the past. Unfortunately, I didn't have fresh broccoli on this day. That's why I didn't do it. But now I'm just squeezing a half of a lemon on top and this is gonna bake in a preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. Here's the finished product. I just served it with some carrots on the side. This came out so, so good. It's one of my entire family's favorite salmon recipes. Even my little daughter loves it. This little mini meatloaf recipe is so, so easy to throw together. I'm just going to chop up a half of a medium-sized white onion to get started, and I'm going to set that aside. For the ground beef that I'm using, I'm just using this pound of grass-fed, grass-finished ground beef. Of course, it's from Butcher Box. It's really hard to find grass-fed and grass-finished ground beef, so I'm happy they carry that. After I added that to my bowl, I added my two-thirds cup of panko breadcrumbs, with the onion that we chopped up. Next, you're gonna wanna be adding one cracked egg in and then about a tablespoon of some barbecue sauce. Of course, use whatever type of barbecue sauce you like. I just find this for a good deal at my Kroger, so that's why I use that brand. And then I'm going to add in a teaspoon of some yellow mustard. And then for the seasonings, I'm adding about a half a teaspoon of some garlic powder with a small amount of some salt and pepper. I know this isn't the prettiest sight in the world, but now it's time to combine all of these ingredients together. I'm doing it with my hands, of course. You could do it with a spoon or anything like that. I just find it's easiest to do with my hands. Now I have my muffin tray right here. I'm spraying it with some avocado oil nonstick spray just to ensure that nothing sticks. Evenly distribute this mixture. It will make about 12 miniature meatloafs. Bake this in a preheated oven to 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. While we have that in the oven baking, we're going to start on the meatloaf sauce. So in this small size bowl, I added a third a cup of brown sugar, a half a cup of some ketchup, two teaspoons of regular yellow mustard, or you could use Dijon mustard, whatever your preference is, and then about a fourth a teaspoon of some ground nutmeg. The ground nutmeg will add a really nice flavor. Just mix this all together. After these are finished cooking for the first 15 minutes, I removed them from the oven and now I'm just going to pour the meatloaf sauce all over the tops of them and then I'm going to place these back in the oven to cook for an additional 10 to 15 minutes. Here's the finished product. These came out really, really wonderful. We loved the taste and the flavor. I was trying to keep the sides very simple on this night just because I was so busy. So I just served it with one of my sister-in-law's dinner rolls and then some fruit salad. And that is a wrap of this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and got plenty of some meal inspiration. I do want to mention that ButcherBox, in my opinion, is having one of its best deals yet. From February 8th to February 28th, in your first box that you order, you're going to receive two free New York Strip steaks and a package of bacon. Like I said, it is completely free. So I will link their website in my description box below. You could go explore their website, go explore 
before how you could customize a box. I've done that many of times just to see kind of what type of meats that they have compared to what my local grocery store has. I don't know. I really think you'd enjoy ButcherBox though. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.